This is a video that you should be watching before you attempt the assignment on the equilibrium of forces. When an object is in equilibrium, it means that the sum of all forces is zero. So the definition of equilibrium, it's actually called translational equilibrium. We haven't done torques or rotational equilibrium yet, but as far as we're concerned, it will mean, uh, means net force equals zero. So this is true for both X and Y components. So it means that the sum of X components of all the forces acting equals zero. And similarly, the sum of all the Y components also have to equal zero. Now there's two ways to use that information. Uh, remember when we were doing net force in the X direction, I said it was right, all the forces to the right minus all the forces to the left. If this is gonna equal zero, you can either write the equation like that, just take all the forces to the right minus all the ones to the left equals zero, that's an equation. Or you can look at it in terms of balancing left and right. So it means all forces to the right must equal the forces to the left. Similarly in the Y direction, because the net force in the Y direction is all the forces up minus all the forces down. If this is in equilibrium, once again, that's zero, and you can say that up equals down, or you can say that the up forces balance the down forces. Now for some really simple situations, you can just look at it and figure out how you would get unknown forces. So if something is pulling this box to the right at 20 Newtons, and maybe the force of friction or some other force was 15 Newtons, you would know there's an extra force here, F. And if you're trying to find what it is, well, forces to the right are 20, forces to the left are 15 plus that extra force. And so that extra force must be five Newtons. Similarly, up and down. Now we've already seen this when we've had boxes on surfaces. If a box remains on a surface, it means the up forces must balance the down forces. So if there's a normal force and say because of a string or somebody pulling up, there's a, an upward force of 20 and the weight of the box is 80, we've already seen that when you go up equals down, Fn plus 20 equals 80. And in this case, the normal force would be 60 Newtons. So that's using up equals down. What about if a box is hanging from a string, from the ceiling, say? And the weight of this box, see Fg, is 100 Newtons. Now, what's the other force keeping that box in equilibrium? And what are we gonna call that force? Well, the force, this is a string. So the force, we're gonna call it force of tension in the string. Now, if up equals down and that box is just sitting there, then this Ft must exactly equal Fg. So it must equal 100 Newtons. Now, once you've established the tension in a string, that's the tension everywhere in the string. And whatever that string is attached to, it's gonna be pulling on that object with a tension force of 100 Newtons. So if we're interested in the box, it's gonna be pulling up on the box with a force of 100 Newtons. If we happen to be interested in the ceiling, the same string would be pulling down on the ceiling with that exact same force, 100 Newtons. And we would say the tension in the string is 100 Newtons. You would not say the tension is 200 Newtons, it's 100 Newtons. And everywhere that string goes, it will be pulling with that force of 100 Newtons. Now you can even take that string and put it over a pulley and that doesn't change anything as far as the tension in the string goes. So we hang this mass of 100 Newtons from a string, but now we take the string over a pulley and attach it to say your foot or something if you're in traction. So say this is a foot, you put a pulley here. This 100 Newton tension force is everywhere in the string. And so it is, and it's attached to your boot. And so it would actually be pulling your boot this way with a force of tension of 100 Newtons. Okay, so these are 
assuming they use a perfect pulleys and that they have no friction or anything like that. Um, all the pulley does is change the direction of the string. It does not change the tension in the string. So this string would be pulling on your boot with a force of 100 newtons to the right. Now, if you want a bigger force out of that same hanging mass, you could run the string around a couple of pulleys or three pulleys. So this is called a, a one pulley traction system. And there's a problem on your assignment where you need to analyze what the force on that foot is. Now we could have a three pulley system. So if we wanna get more force out of that same weight hanging here, this 100 Newton weight, all we have to do is get more parts of that string attached. So what you do is you run it over one pulley here. That just changes the direction. Now you run it over another pulley here and then a third pulley attached to a seal to the ceiling. And so every point of contact is pulling. So that string is holding up the mass. And then this will be attached to your foot. So now what happens is if we look at this point here, remember this over here, this is not the same string. This is a different string. It's these two strings. So this string is pulling on that pulley with 100 newtons. Pulling here, remember it can only pull, it can't push, 100 newtons. It would be pulling down on the ceiling as well with 100 newtons. Now that's assuming all these pulleys are fixed. They're not like, they're not attached to the ceiling. They're fixed in some other rigid system. So now if you look at this, this rope here pulling on your foot, in order to keep this pulley, this pulley in equilibrium, which means it's not moving and all the forces equal zero, there has to be a pulling force here of 200 newtons. And that would balance the two 100 newtons to the right. Now remember, this is a new string or new rope or cable or whatever you wanna call it. Now, if it's got a 200 newton tension in it, it's gonna pull back on your foot also with 200 newtons. And so this three pulley traction system gives you twice the force out of this hanging 100 Newton mass because, um, because you've got those two ropes each of 100 now. And you can just keep doing this forever. You could put like 10 pulleys and, and if you had 20 times the number of ropes, you could have 200 Newtons. You start to lose energy and forces because of friction and turning the pulleys. But theoretically you can use that 100 Newton tension in that string over as many pulleys as you want to increase that force on your foot. This is called the three pulley traction system. Okay, another example that now, rather than using up equals down, sometimes we like to use a table to find the, we wanna find the unknown force that puts the system into equilibrium. So if you're given two forces, for example, they may be because of a traction system or they may be somebody just pulling on some part of your body. Now, clearly the sum of these two forces is not zero. If these two forces were to act on an object, this object would move over to the right. Now, whether it would move up or down depends how big the vertical forces are here. So those two, those two forces, when you add them together, they do not equal zero. The question is, where do you put the third force so that they do, the three of them equal zero? And so what I like to do here is a table which we've done before for calculating net force and which was done in that video about using components. Now I do my table vertically this way. So I'm gonna list my F1, F2, and then F3, which is unknown. We don't know what it is, but we know when we add them all up, F net, that this column has to be zero and this column has to be zero. So let's put our values in for these components. So F1X is here to the right, F1Y is vertically up, F2 
two X is also to the right and F two Y is negative, it's down. Okay, so the X's go with the cosine. So this would be 10 cos 25 and 10 sine 25. And those two numbers are 9.1, and you can verify these for me, 4.2. For F2, we would have 30 cos 40 degrees and negative, because it points down, 30 sine 40 degrees. And 30 cos 40 equals 23. And negative 30 sine 40 equals negative 19.3. Now we're trying to find F3X, we don't know what it is, and F3Y, we don't know what it is, but we know when we add those three numbers together in each column, we have to get zero. So for the X direction, when we add down, we have 9.1 plus 23 plus F3X must be zero. So this leads to F3X being negative, which would make sense, it has to point left to balance those two. And similarly, in the y direction, we would have the 4.2 minus the 19.3 plus F3y has to be zero as well. And that gives an F3y of 15.1. So this is in the third quadrant, this net, this third force that balances those two. So it's like something like this, there's F3. But we're not done because we need its magnitude and we need this angle. So to get the magnitude, we use Pythagoras. F3 would be the square root of the X component squared minus 32.1 squared plus the Y component squared. And that gives a magnitude of that force of 35.5 Newtons. And then the direction, theta, would be the arctan of y over x, 15.1 over, and you don't need the negative here because it's just a, the small angle in there. And then this angle turns out to be 25.2 degrees, but I would have to say this would be above negative X axis. So make sure you do a diagram and make sure you indicate which quadrant you're in when you're giving a direction for a vector. Okay. Now, another example you're going to find in your assignment is crutches. What is the weight that crutches take when you use them? Okay. So if you have crutches because you've hurt your leg and you can only stand on one leg. Let's first just do, so you're standing on one leg, the other leg's hurt, you're holding it up here, but you have crutches under your arms. So we're gonna do the crutches just vertically for first because that's easier. Okay, so this is the crutch. Now, of course, it's closer to your armpit, but that's okay, we'll just put it out here. Okay, so these are crutches. The question's gonna be, what is the force on the crutch? And this, then ultimately becomes the force of your armpit. If you don't use the crutches properly and use your arm muscles, and if you were to just take your hands off the crutches and let it sink into your armpits, this is what your armpits would feel. So the question will be, let's say the weight of the man is 800 Newtons. And then let's say that the criteria is that we want half our body weight on that one foot. Okay, so if half the body weight is on one foot, what is the force along the crutch? We'll do each crutch. Okay, so we analyze your body here. So you have a force of 800 Newtons down, that's your force of gravity, and that never changes, no matter whether you have crutches or not. 